Dragon Ball Super was a mistake. If there's one thing anime at large has a problem with, it's ending. Few anime actually get a proper ending, whether that is due to the production not finishing the entirety of the manga, the mangaka not being able to finish their work for health reasons, or just an anime being a really long story. There are not many anime out there that end. However, the ones that do have a proper ending tend to be raved as some of the golden children of the community. Shows like FMA, Code Geass, and Chen Plu. You see, that was until a little point in time I like to call the era of reboots and remakes. To put it simply, the era of reboots and remake is the act of the entertainment world remaking or continuing an already established franchise to either cash in on the nostalgia factor or... Actually, that's kind of it. I can't think of any other reason to bring back a show that ended. But my problem is not generally with remakes. As long as the remake sticks to the original source material and only seeks to elevate it, then I have no complaints. The recent Fruits Basket remake is a perfect example of a remake done right. My problem is with sequels and continuations. The second way this era of reboots and remakes tends to cash in on nostalgia. Surprisingly enough, my favorite anime of all time is Dragon Ball. <laughs> Yes, I know the guy that tells people to watch underrated shows and makes fun of Shonen in several videos. His favorite anime is the king of Battle Shonen itself, like the most recognizable anime in the entire world, arguably, Dragon Ball. Yes, I am a huge Dragon Ball fan, and I say this with all the love in my heart for the franchise. Dragon Ball Super was a mistake. <laughs> Now, why do I think Dragon Ball Super was a mistake? You see, I live in the West, and by the time Dragon Ball came to the West to become the worldwide phenomenon it is today, the Dragon Ball manga had concluded and the anime was near its end. In fact, by the time we got Dragon Ball Z over here, GT was already in full swing in Japan. And we all know, that didn't last long. I'm never gonna financially recover from this. My point is that the show was completed, so when I got the chance to watch it, both as a child and rewatch it as a teenager, and then rewatch it as a young adult, I've seen Dragon Ball in its entirety more times than I can count, don't look at me like that, I got to see the complete work. It wouldn't be until 18 years after putting down the pen that Akira Toriyama would return to the world of Dragon Ball and give us the Battle of Gods movie, only for this movie to spiral into another movie. And then in 2015, the Dragon Ball anime would officially return in the form of Dragon Ball Super. At first, I was excited to have more Dragon Ball after so long. It was like my personal wet dream come true. If those are my wet dreams, do I need therapy? Yeah, whatever. And there were millions of fans that would agree with me. However, I think we all failed to see how much the franchise had changed in the last 18 years and the implications of putting Dragon Ball into the current generation's hands. Dragon Ball, the story itself, has faced many issues in conveying the actual author's intentions, from turning Toriyama's gag-like manga into a hardcore action slugfest, to translation eras, changing characters like Goku. Not only was the perception of fans changed, but even some fundamental aspects of the story. As for the perspective of Western Dragon Ball fans versus the original work, we'll, we'll save that for a later video because that's a whole topic in itself. But as for the changes in the story, oh boy. Does that have the whole community around the world seething with anger? The first thing we have to realize is that Dragon Ball Super was not written by Toriyama and still is not written by Toriyama, not the manga or the anime. Yes, he is giving the okay and even designing some of the characters, but what we experience in the story is coming from people imitating his style. And it shows from Goku and Vegeta becoming bigger comic relief characters than they ever were in Z to just characters radically changing like Bardock and Broly. We get more power-ups, more techniques, more villains, more transformations, but the point I'm trying to draw to is, did we all need that so badly that the franchise fell into the hands of people who decided to give us their interpretation of Dragon Ball? Not saying that the writers of Super and Toyotaro are doing a terrible job, but when you look at the wider story of Dragon Ball Super, and it feels like its own separate thing from the rest of the franchise, isn't that a problem? Like, wasn't that the same issue we had with GT? One of the many issues we had with GT? It's like looking at the new Star Wars trilogy. Instead of coming up with a story that spanned across three movies, Disney decided to play a game of you write this next part and you write this next part with each movie and it ended up being a trilogy that doesn't connect well in the slightest. That's how Dragon Ball Super feels to me. 
from the original Dragon Ball story all the way to the end of Z, you find points within every arc that indicates what will be in the future arcs. And although we know for a fact that the Battle of Gods and Super Continuations were not planned at all, it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth when looking at the bigger picture. Yes, we got more Dragon Ball, but at what cost? There are several great things within Dragon Ball Super Story, but there are several things that change the story from its original appeal that I love. Like Goku selfishly putting the multiverse in danger so he can fight strong people, to continuing character arcs that have already had a beautiful ending like Vegeta in the Buu Saga and Gohan in the Cell games. And I'm pretty sure you've heard of the Bardock Dilemma from the recent chapters. When it comes to sequels, Many people tend to focus on the good it can bring the franchise, but just as it can bring good, it can bring bad as well. Once again, I am not saying the writers of Dragon Ball today like Tortaro are bad, I'm just stating that when a sequel is given to another to produce, usually the core of the series that so many fans like myself love is lost. And you get sequels like Boruto, like Dragon Ball Super that basically stand on their own with little to no magic of the original series besides seeing the characters you know and love once again. So I ask you again, it is awesome that we are getting more Dragon Ball, but at what cost? Is it time to just let our favorite works end or should we continue to expand this world and try to recreate some nostalgic feeling we once had? I personally think we should let it end. I had fun watching Dragon Ball Super, I have fun reading the manga, but the things I love about it are equal to the things I hate about it at this point. So given the option, I'm not sure I would have chosen to even make Dragon Ball Super a thing in the first place. And that's why I say, Dragon Ball Super was a mistake. Maybe it's time to let Dragon Ball rest. I know this is a very hot take, but I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments below. Let's talk about it. I love Dragon Ball to my core, but I, I think it's time for it to end. Either way, if you like this type of content, then hit that big red sub button and also hit that like button while you're at it. If you want to see anything from us weekly, then follow us on Twitch because we stream there Mondays and Thursdays. Also, click that Twitter link for more hot takes. And if you disagree with this take and really want to tell me personally, also click that Discord link. Join up. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my friends, I am RJ Lane, and this has been On The Rise.